Huh, these guys were right. It is the exact same car. Hmm. Oh, hello. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to round six of the We Mazda Be Crazy leaderboard. So far, we have seen two cars from the 90s and three cars from the 2010s. Or at least, this will be the third car that we see from the 2010s. This is the Mazda MX-5 NC Mazda Cup Edition. We are looking at 167 horsepower, 140 foot-pounds of torque, and 2,420 pounds in weight. So apparently the producers weren't lying when they said it would be the exact same car, albeit lighter. As usual, we have got 11 tracks to throw the car at, and for our first track, we are going back to the home of the Mazda. We are going to the land of the rising sun. Track number two, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back in Abu Dhabi at Yas Marina where... Um, this car had a lot of understeer around this track, in particular on the entrance up to the corkscrew. I just understeer for days, I'm telling you. That said, the protagonist had a lap time of 1 minute 9.202 seconds to beat, and did it in a time of 1 minute 11. Point zero two four seconds. So that's a split of about 1.8 seconds, give or take. That's actually really impressive for a car that's as slow as this is. Anyways, we're going from one corkscrew to another as we head back to the good old US of A. Or at least what's left of it. Track number four, ladies and gentlemen, saw us back in New England, where, um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, um, edit. Anyway, yes, track number four saw us back in New England for Maple Valley, where this car really shone. I'm not going to lie, this car properly, properly shone. Damage be damned at the end of lap two. The car really honestly shone. It's really starting to show its true colours now as this car. Um, other than the crash, handled the rest of the track pretty well. We were up to about, I think it was 129 miles an hour on that downhill section towards the start finish line, which that's not too bad. We've seen quicker, don't get me wrong, but simultaneously we've seen slower. That said, the lap time the protagonist had to beat was a 1 minute 52.592 seconds, a time that was set by the trumpet. The protagonist did its best lap lap time on this, its third and final lap of Maple Valley, in a time of 1 minute 54.561 seconds. That's albeit just less than a two-second split. See what I mean when I said that this car is really starting to come alive all of a sudden? This track and that lap time is proof of that. Right, time to go European. And not for the first time. Take me home to the place. Oh shit, sorry. Um <clears throat> yes, welcome back to track number six, the Virginia International Raceway. John Denver, shut up. I will admit the NC 
MX-5 Cup Edition actually handled this track surprisingly well. It handled the off-road sections a lot better than I thought it was going to as well, which threw me. I'm not going to lie, that properly threw me. But, oh well. Even the best of us can be proven wrong, clearly. That said, the protagonist had a time of 1 minute 26.389 seconds to beat. And he did it on this, its second lap, in a time of 1 minute 30.157 seconds. Which is a split of about... about 3 point... what is that? 3.3 seconds? Yeah, 3.3 seconds. Which... Uh, again, it's trying. It wants to go quicker. I know it does. This car doesn't need to believe in itself. It needs to believe in the me that believes in it. Ten points to whoever gets that reference. Track number seven, ladies and gentlemen, brought us back to the Lime Rock South Chicane. And holy shit, this car is amazing around this track. Like... This car around this track is amazing. There was very little understeer. Well, actually, no. There was very little to no understeer. Very little to no oversteer. This car and this track is a match made in motorsport heaven. That said, the time that the protagonist had to beat was a 1 minute 7.092 seconds. And the protagonist did it on this, its second lap, in a time of... 1 minute, 7, point, zero, nine, two. I shit you not this thing tied with the NC Super 20. Which is really impressive when this thing has got far less horsepower than the NC Super 20. This little MX-5, the MX-5 Mazda Cup Edition, it has earned my respect. Let's move on to the next track. Track number 8, ladies and gentlemen, and we were at Road Atlanta where... Oh, this car just keeps getting better and better and better, I'm telling you. This car performed so, so unspeakably well around Road Atlanta. It's not even funny, actually, as to how well this car performed around Road Atlanta. Very little oversteer. Very little understeer. Pretty good noise in some places as well. It's kind of sort of reminding me of uh, of the old AE86. Press F to pay respects for the fact that it isn't in Forza 7 or Forza Horizon 4. Anyways, the protagonist had a time of 1 minute 45.191 seconds to beat. And performed this lap time on this, its third and final lap. Its best lap lap time was a 1 minute 48.385 seconds, which works out to about. about a 2. Point, about a 2.8 second split. I mean. I really want this car to do better. I really do. It just needs like another 10 horsepower or something, and maybe a bit more in the weight reduction department, and it would be there. It would be there. We would have the Super 20 by the balls. Uh, let's see if the Swiss can help us out. I sure hope they can. Maybe it's cold outside, and it's not much warmer in the car. Welcome back to Switzerland for the Bernese Alps, and track number 9 of round 6 of the We Mazda Be Crazy Championship. Now then, the car actually did really well around here. Yeah, unfortunately we did give it a black eye, and its arse did start uh, hanging off. That was a crash that we had on lap 1 going down the high-speed downhill section, where we actually got 141 miles per hour 
out of the NC MX-5 Cup Edition, which is a lot more than I was expecting. That's only 4 miles an hour off the NC Super 20. This car is really meaning business. Again, if it just had 10 horsepower more and a little less weight, it'd be there. I'm sure it would be. That said, the protagonist has a time of 1 minute 6.091 seconds to beat, and did its best lap lap time on this, its third and final lap, in a time of 2 minutes 10.590. Still a good noise through the tunnel, mind you. But the point is, is that it's about a three and a half se no, hang on a minute. Not three and a half seconds. I can't math. It's a four and a half second split to the closest full tenth of a second, which I will admit, I, I am pleasantly surprised with that. I really honestly am. I will happily settle for a four and a half second split, although I do wish it was what I accidentally said earlier which was a three and a half second split. Still, beggars, choosers and the like. Time to go to the land down under. Well folks, here we are, the second to last track of round six of the We Mazda Be Crazy Championship. We are back at the Mount Panorama circuit in Bathurst, Australia, where, again, this car just came to life, especially through the coaster. This thing was phenomenal through the coaster, like, bar none. And it's actually one of the few cars we've had go through the coaster that hasn't oversteered, or had a big oversteer moment, out the final turn of the coaster by the Falcon tire wall. So, kudos where they are due to the NC MX-5 Cup. That said, the protagonist had a time of 1 minute 41.504 seconds to beat, and did it in a time of 2 minutes 50.539 seconds which makes it 9.035 seconds slower than the trumpet. 9.035. Ah, oh, I had such high hopes for this car, I really honestly did. The only one major crash we had actually was through this section here, coming over the crest of this left hand and now. The back end of the car just stepped out and we wound up putting it in that outside wall. Outside of that though, no real quibbles here we come up to the coaster, where as I say this car just danced through the coaster, it really honestly did. One of the best handling, if not the best handling car that we have had so far through the coaster. It just handled it beautifully, it really honestly did. Kind of sort of makes me want to see a grid of like 20 of these things just tackle the Mount Panorama circuit, I'll admit. But, uh, but yeah. And I didn't actually catch what our top speed was along here. I think it was, I think we got up to about 130 miles an hour again before we had to jump on the brakes for this real nasty left-hander coming up. Because it does, it just creeps up on you so quick, especially if you're driving a Holden or Ford V8 supercar around this track. This left-hander is a real, real bitch. Right, having said that, we are on to our final track. Why can I hear Jeremy Clarkson's voice all of a sudden? Ladies and gentlemen, we are back in the UK for track number 11, the Top Gear Aerodrome at Dunsfold, England, where this car performed fantastically. It really honestly did. The taut suspension, the semi-slick tyres, the flappy paddle transmission kind of sort of let it down in my opinion, but that's just me. 
here we come up to Chicago. Now the time that the protagonist had to beat was a 1 minute 25.299 seconds, a time that was set by the NC Super 20, aka the Trumpet. And the NC MX-5 Cup, aka the protagonist, did it on this, its third and final lap, in a time of 1 minute 27. 0.602 seconds, which to the closest full one tenth of a second is about uh, 2.3, 2.4 seconds. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all, but I wish the car could go quicker. Here we go through the follow through where, past these tyres on the first lap, we were at 103 miles an hour on the exit of the follow through. Pretty impressive if you ask me. Here we come up to the penultimate corner, nicely done. Here we come back through Gambon, and across the line. Let's conclude. So, let's recap. For those of you who weren't paying attention, and believe you me, I know you people exist, the NC MX-5 Cup Edition was fastest, unsurprisingly, once again, around the Lime Rock South Chicane circuit, where it tied with the NC Super 20. I... We had it. We had it. It was the perfect formula, it was the perfect car for the perfect track, and we still couldn't beat that little supercharged four-cylinder bastard. As for the car itself, I will admit, just like with the NC, the street variant of the NC that we saw yesterday, I didn't really like the MX-5 Cup when we started way back when at Suzuka. However, as we've virtually globe-trotted through round six, I've slowly come to like the car, which might sound a bit bizarre, but really, it isn't. Because this car, granted with maybe an additional 10 or so horsepower, is what the Super 20 should have been, and what the NC Super 20 could have been, if Mazda had pulled their heads out their asses. Now don't get me wrong, this car probably won't be the most comfortable thing out there on the open roads. By no means is it the quickest. But, it handled everything that I threw at it surprisingly well, a lot, and I mean a lot, better than I originally participated. I mean, that's got to be worth something at the end of the day, surely. Now on to the big question. Would I recommend you get one? In-game, I think you kind of sort of get rewarded one for completing an autocross challenge. So... Whether or not you want to get one is completely and utterly beside the point. Unless you decide to buy a second one for whatever reason. Would I recommend you get one IRL? Um, I'm not sure. And I say that predominantly for the fact because I'm pretty sure Mazda didn't mean for this car to be a street friendly machine. But even if you bought one as a track-specific vehicle, I still wouldn't be able to point you in the right direction to get one of your own. If you know a guy who knows a guy, who knows someone's cousin who just so happens to owe you a favour, then by all means, try and hunt one down IRL, because I really... I know I can't drive IRL, but if someone out there does own an MX-5 NC Cup, and you live in the UK, please let me know, because I would love to drive it. I've experienced it in Forza 7, and now I want more. It's kind of like chocolate. Or sex. Actually, no, let's... Let's just stick with the first one. That said... The car that we're going to be driving tomorrow is the new kid on the block, as far as the Mazda MX-5 is concerned. And let's just say, 
It looks really, really pissed off. It really honestly does. Having said that, thank you all so, so much for sticking with round six of the We Master Be Crazy leaderboard. And if you've actually managed to watch this far in the series, well, thank you for following the series from start to finish. It means a huge amount. If you've liked what you've seen here, please do make sure to subscribe, leave a like, maybe even leave a comment. Who knows, maybe even share it with a couple of your friends. It's up to you. I'm not your parents. That said, until tomorrow, where we see round seven of the We Mazda Be Crazy Championship, this has been Lewis on behalf of The Rolling Road, saying thank you all so, so much for watching, and until tomorrow, take care of yourselves.